5,000 homes evacuated right now because of this fire. This is serious. It is rapidly growing. We're talking about at least 3,000 acres, according to fire officials. This is up Parley's Canyon, and the smoke has been billowing for miles. Folks have seen this. Uh, in the last hour, we got a cause of this fire, caused by equipment, a Cadillac converter in poor working order, ejecting hot particles along the roadside. There have been delays along I-80. At one point, it was shut down. So many striking images from today, and we do have crews on the ground. Our Jordan Burroughs joining us. Jordan, you heard the way that I set this up. Uh, take it from there. What do we know? What are you seeing? Absolutely, Nick. I mean, we're right by this UDOT station, but the fire has actually been contained pretty well so far. We're going to get a zoom in here so you can see where we're at. But earlier today, if you were with us watching our cut in around 345 in this afternoon, this fire is getting contained as fast as they came with local, state, and federal resources. Nick, like you mentioned, we figure out that cause. A catalytic converter causing the fire, more than 2,000 acres burning. And it could be more, could be less at this point. At my last update so far, they said it was more than 2,000 acres uh, of burning so far up in Parley's Canyon. Traffic is still moving pretty slow. It's pretty standstill right now. It would take about 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, to get through I-80 here. They have so many resources, so many flights and planes and what they can to get over this and drop any sort of retardant that they can to get over this fire. Here on I-80, up Parley's Canyon, mile marker 137. Multiple ground and air resources have been responding. We also did talk to several witnesses that were actually off we were for our last live shot. I was asking them, you know, what did you see? What have you experienced? We actually talked to this woman from New York, uh, another woman from Chicago. They both said this is one of the craziest fires that they've ever seen, but they also said that they're happy with the response here from Utah. So far, uh, you know, knock on wood, the wildfire season hasn't been so bad, but this, obviously, it, it looks pretty brutal right now, but just a couple hours ago, the scene was so much worse up here up Parley's Canyon. Of course, Nick, like you mentioned, we'll be monitoring this throughout the evening. We'll be live again at 10 o'clock and online at abc4.com, and as any pictures and videos come in, you'll see those online as well. Reporting live on I-80, Jordan Burroughs, ABC4 News. Okay, thanks, Jordan. That catalytic converter, just a sign of how dry it is out there. We have this information from our U.S. Senator Mitt Romney tweeting, As this devastating fire spreads rapidly through Parley's Canyon, I encourage Utahns to stay safe, avoid the area, to allow fire personnel access. Praying for the safety of these first responders and for the residents in the area as they evacuate. This is very much a developing story. Kaylee Yardley is a public information officer for this fire. Uh, Kaylee, I don't know if you're on the phone here, but uh, can you give us a sense of what we know right now? Yeah, hey, this is Kaylee. I, uh, you know, it's just like what you guys have said. Uh, about an hour ago, it was around 2,000 acres, I guess. They're looking at it now, about 2,500 to possibly 3,000 acres, and it's still growing rapidly. Um, you know, we've been very fortunate that we've had the resources available to to help us. You know, air resources are, are great. Uh, it's a great uh, opportunity for these guys um, to get in here and do some work, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get it uh, stopped uh, sooner than later. So you have the evacuation center that's now moved to Park City High School. I imagine that's bigger than Ecker Hill Middle School where it was before. Uh, six to 8,000 homes evacuated. I mean, this is pretty serious. Jordan, though, mentioning that it doesn't seem as smoky by him. So can you help me understand what's going on? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not there live on scene. Uh, however, you know, based off of the information that I've been given, you know, this is a, we want to make sure that the public's safe. Uh, not only that, um, as well as our firefighters. That's a huge, um, you know, area. When we have people right there within our area where the fire's coming, you know, Firefighter safety and the public safety is number one for us. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, it, the smoke, that sort of thing, it, it is definitely an impact, um, especially for folks that are more susceptible to, you know, to, to the breathing issues. And um, so hopefully it's, it's, like I said, I'm hoping that the, uh, the air resources are, are doing some great work and uh, getting, it, getting it wrapped up before, you know, too long. Yes, yeah, so we have Summit Park evacuated, Pine Brook, Lambs Canyon, and Mill Creek, uh, some six to 8,000 homes. What's your message to folks in that community, uh, in those areas right now? I know a lot of folks don't always want to evacuate, but uh, are these all, all mandatory evacuations? And what's your message to the locals there? Yeah, you know, honestly, I would, it is a scary thing. Um, you know, I, 
I try to push the Ready Set Go the Ready Set Go program um, within uh, our areas with that, with, across the state. Um, you know, and that's those are just some things to prepare for evacuations. Um, and unfortunately, you know, you don't have a lot of time um, when things like this happen. Um, but you know, rest assured, if you know we get this thing wrapped up, these guys can go back in their homes um, sooner than later. Um, one thing, you know, like I said, just try to stay safe. Um, be aware, you know, the 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 officials have asked, you know, for for uh, evacuation. So so please follow and obey, you know, what our um, local government officials, uh, you know, fire law, uh, all of your enforcement folks. Please follow what their their guidance is. Um, if they ask you not to be in the area, please avoid. Uh, please avoid it. Um, you know, stay safe. Um, and like I said, it's not only for you, it's for the firefighters as well. Well, we're really hoping for everyone to be safe and for these homes to be safe. Kaylee Yardley, public information on the fire. We do appreciate you. We know you are incredibly busy. We were just speaking about evacuations. So many people, right? Six to 8,000 homes. One of them is our own Craig Worth, one of the evacuees. Uh, Craig, we hope you're safe. Um, tell us what this was like today. Today. Oh. It was very orderly, you know, when you see fire and you live on a mountain, you think about fire. Uh, the public information people, the sheriff, the Park City Fire Department, uh, sent around notices, sent uh, Twitter, sent uh, some feeds to us, and then we got the kind of like the emergency broadcast system that said, first of all, sheriff is recommending evacuations. And then about an hour later, mandatory evacuations. It was all done orderly. Um, our officials, our firefighters, all the first responders, you know, we just can't say enough good things about them. But it's really kind of scary when you get that word evacuate and you start thinking, what should I take? I took a chocolate chip cookie and my two dogs. <laughs> Not in that order, the dogs first, because you think to your, and my computer, um, but you think, what is it that's very important to you? And of course, it's your family. In my case, that's two dogs. Well, you can't forget the chocolate chip cookies. Uh, Craig, we really appreciate your time. So, I thought I might be out for a couple of days. So, <laughs> you got you to gotta have the dogs as well. Um, let's talk about whether you saw smoke. Did you, did you smell it? I mean, how close was this to, to some of your neighbors? We won't go into where you live exactly, but um, to what extent was this fire close to you guys? I mean, how far away were they saying, hey, we just want you evacuated out of here for safety? It definitely is close. And you, you see these news pictures, you and I see them every day as we do the news where your house is here and the flames are where we behind it. Where That's we where we are. And um, it, we saw that and it, it, it's very scary. It's it's very compelling. The force of the fire to see the sky turn orange is something. And yes, I definitely saw flames. I definitely saw smoke. And then I got out and uh, came down I-80. Um, I met a family member's house in uh, Salt Lake City, very safe. But as you drove by and saw the the workers and on this hot day, can you imagine what they were going through as they were trying to put it out? The winds kicked up. That's always a little bit scary. But um, again, uh, I had the easy part. It's the first responders who today I hope are all thinking about. An extremely rapidly moving fire. Craig, I have one more question for you. You've been in the news business for decades. You talk to people during the worst day of their lives. They say, I never thought this would happen to me. Uh, now it's happening to you, and I, and I heard that I had to evacuate. What do I bring? Um, what was that like? Well, again, you um, today, unlike the earlier days, and you talk about all the years that I've been in TV, we didn't have those resources of the internet, of the uh, evacuations that came in on our phones and we, we received phone calls, we received um, emergency messages. It makes it a lot better than I think when we uh, look back 20 years, 30 years ago, when you just didn't know what was happening. And then uh, I've been watching television. Uh, you guys have done an incredible job giving the, uh, the story of what's going on. And so I think today it's, a lot better for those of us who uh, have been displaced from our homes 
by being able to keep in contact. I can only imagine if I was sitting here knowing two hours ago I saw flames behind my house. And when I say behind my house, maybe a mile behind my house, but to have seen that and then to be wondering, but today we know, and I thank the media, I thank our, our officials greatly. Okay, thank you, Greg. We do thank you for your time today. I know it's been a, a tough day. So Craig Worth, uh, beloved member of our team, appreciate his time after being evacuated today. We're going to move on to the weather now. Uh, meteorologist Cesar Cornejo. And Cesar, you have been following all this as well. Obviously, eyes to the sky. Um, I guess we talk about weather, but uh, you take it from here. Well, Nick, right now we continue to see that this was definitely an event that everyone around the Salt Lake County area and even probably further could see. This was a picture taken in here by Eric over in Murray. Oof, look at that. You could see the pyrocumulus really forming and oof, it was pretty scary out there. Also got to see some of the smoke just over here in the Park City side from Park Meadows. Oof, we got this one sent in by Sam and you could just see how orange the sky really got you cannot see much of the sun just because of how thick the smoke was really going out there and when we take a look currently at what's going on 87 degrees right there right around i-80 by this fire we'll see that winds are still blowing at 15 miles an hour 22 mile an hour wind gusts and it is very dry look at that 19 percent humidity and that's the unfortunate thing that we still continue to see here also, high heat throughout the rest of the state. We, as we continue to have all of those triple digits and if not upper 90s heat. And I'll have more on what we can expect to see coming up in Utah's most accurate forecast. Over to you, Nick. Okay, thanks, Caesar. That catalytic, catalytic converter, the cause of this fire, some 8,000 homes evacuated. Our Jordan Burroughs is going to be live on scene. More on the Parley's Canyon fire coming up after the break.